Welcome to the Tommy Sandu podcast. This is ridiculous. I am I'm in a very, very dark room. For anyone who's watching this on YouTube, uh, for those who are listening on Spotify or Apple or GeoSavan or any other streaming platform that we're on right now, this is irrelevant. But I'm in a very dark room because I'm in Dubai still. Uh, I've just done a, a, a chat with Janita Gandhi, who is a great friend. You're about to hear it. But it suddenly got dark on me very, very quickly. But um, the great thing is, Janita is a ray of light, and she really is, because she's beaming with all her new projects uh, and her, do I call it her new style of music or her old style of music? I guess it's she's going back to her roots, because Janita can sing in so many different languages, but she's taking it back to the Punjab for her new sound, or her current sound, uh, with a track called Jalagoyna. Uh, but we had to have a catch-up. She's awesome. Uh, she's a, honestly a real energy ball and a, a whole lot of fun. Here is the brilliant Janita Gandhi on the Tommy Sandu podcast. And we're live. That's it. That's how it works. How are you, Janita Gandhi? You all right? What's up, Tommy G? How are you? Okay. Oh, I'm good. Can, may, I, may I be so direct as to say straight away, you're looking very glam sham, young lady. The hair is all quaffed up. You, look, you know, the lines get look at, um, no, you're looking well, looking really well. Obviously, the, the rest of the planet, lockdown. Except this here. one here. This one here is not really my friend right now. Oh, well. I got it, this wild thing going on, though, so everything's allowed. But but there's, I mean, who am I, what do I know about hair? It's very much out of my realm of conversation. But that looks, looks bigger than before. You know, it's funny because my natural hair is this big. It's just so, I style it so much. And now I've just thought, I need to just unleash the beast. Yeah, man. Set it free. So that, see, I think that. <laughs> Let that it one, go. Maybe that one hair is starting a little kind of mutiny for the rest of it. Saying, hey, guys, screw her. Let's do our own thing. Come with me. Look at that. You got, it, it, that just on its own could be the, the Superman curl at the top of his head. You know that that one that's, that's Clark Kent had back in the day? There you go. You're looking yeah. well. That's what I was going to say, sister. You're looking well. That's all. Um, Thank but, you, and, my brother. Are, are you okay? Life good? All that? Happy days? Life's great. All good. Happy Diwali in advance. Happy, How are well, you? How's your family? They are good. It might not be in advance. By the time this comes out, you might, well, it might unless you're congratulating people for, or, you know, for Diwali next year, they might be in advance. I could be. Happy Diwali yeah. 2022. Well, do you want to just get all the, all the Diwali, happy Diwalis out for forever? <laughs> just, I think, just, we, then, then it's done. Then then at least I'll happy never... Happy Diwali, call. Merry Christmas, happy birthday, yeah. everything. Yeah. For for the rest of your life. and for therefore, the rest you, of your life. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I've dealt with it now. So always know this, that on, on Diwali, on my birthday, at Christmas, I'll go, oh, I've got a message from Janita. And my wife will go, all oh, right, that's nice. Yeah, she said, happy Diwali, Merry Christmas. And... Oh, I've lost you on screen. What's happening? You, you were pressing, she was pressing buttons on the screen. So I'm hoping Janita. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Give, no. like, th th that was really embarrassing. I'm no, back I, I know. I like the fact that you said, Happy Diwali, Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday. I'll see you later. I see it. My work here is done and I'm out. Yep. Goodbye. Goodbye forever. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you obviously, um, you obviously looking after yourself and we're well throughout lockdown. You never know how people are going to come out the other side of, of being, particularly when you're an artist and you need your audience. Well, you're right. You were starved of the love of the people live and, and you're good live. You're not one of them ones. You're not one of those, you know, you're not one of the lip sinkers. So, um, so don't know so what you're talking about. Oh, you oh right? right. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's really nice. Oh, man, I mean it. I mean it. But did you, did you miss, did you miss the live? I still do a little bit, not as much as everyone else though. I know that sounds really like sketch, but I feel like everyone else is <laughs> like, oh, I can't wait to get back on stage. I can't wait to do my gigs. And I'm just like, you know what? I don't, I don't mind this break. It's kind of nice. Yeah. But that's because what? Because you were so busy beforehand. That, that I think it's more because now I'm getting more time to prioritize the creation and the making of the songs and the shooting of the videos. And it's like the touring of that can come later. I'm just like really obsessed with the creation right now. I think that's why. Oh, is this is this new? Is this kind of new a, a new approach? It's new in this way. For me, I hadn't really given it my all. I hadn't really committed to bringing out, you know, the multifacetedness that is Jodita. But now I'm like really excited about trying new things, coming and dancing and doing choreography and doing a little more 
um, intricate music videos. Yeah, so no, it's pretty fun. Right. So who's who's behind that? Is that just you kind of going, you know, like you know, like Madonna? Are you just kind of you know a little re, a little reinvention, or is it like management saying, "Hi, Judah, I've got style, huh? Uh, I, uh, I don't know, I can't do Hindi, but you know, um, that uh, was pretty good. I'm, though. I'm, I'm badal, right. I'm, let badal your style, you keep it fresh, you know, Janita. Is it one of them ones? I, That's I don't know. really funny. Um, my manager is gonna watch this and be like, he sounds exactly like me. <laughs> no, no. He's, a, he's he's a patronizing whatever bleep is what she'll probably say uh or he'll say um so no, but, but, like, <laughs> is this is it a conscious like thing or is this is this the and, and i don't just talk like this with you because you're the you're as real as they come but is this the evolution of the artist you know that is like no i think okay so when you say who's behind this um i want to give credit to treehouse vht which is the label and um the director of the videos jay skilly uh, this is something that I think has been coming together over the past couple of years. Like I did a couple of collaborations with Mickey Singh. We did Nana, we did 4AM. And I think, although Nana set out to be just like a singular one-off collab, we found a groove with the way that that song came together, with the way that we shot the video, with um, the way that we were performing and stuff. So I think I also found a home at Treehouse during Nana and felt, hey, this is my vibe. Yeah. And like, I never really prioritized what I want to do as much because as a playback singer, what happens is we kind of just jump into lots of different scenarios, different genres, different languages, you know, across the regional stuff to Bollywood, all that stuff. Um, and you kind of get carried away doing what other people are telling you to do, which is a great learning experience. But I feel now that I got, I can just pull from all that experience and like, yeah throw it into my own stuff and I, yeah so it was it was definitely um a vision from treehouse as well for me that's kind of been a long time coming it's been uh, there's so many people my manager everybody's been saying like okay we need to do more like singles and independent work and i'm like i'm so excited but i've also also been like nervous and i'm still kind of nervous but i'm no, kind of pushing I, myself i honestly i'm and again i'm not blowing smoke um you know i think you don't if anyone doesn't need to be nervous about trying new things, it's you with 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 the languages, with everything, because you've done lots of different styles of songs. I was actually just right. having a listen today because I knew we were chatting and I was listening to loads of the South Indian stuff that you were doing. And, I, you know, and I'm not even sure what language they're in because outside of Punjabi and Hindi and a bit of Urdu, I, I'm lost, you know. So, yeah, I'm like, mm, you know, she's doing it. And the style is so different. And you kind of, and I think you are, you are a bit of an actress, you know, and even like the way you talk and you suddenly put things on and you play things up and we know what Janita's going to do. That's just me being a drama queen. I know, no, but it's, it's, no, it's your performing side. It's your, it's not wrong. <laughs> See, look at that. Look at the nakare. But now, now, welcome to my people. You are going Punjabi. You got, you went, you were big down south. Now you're going up north. Um, and well, the reason, hold on, the reason it's nerve nerve wracking though, and the community said like you shouldn't be afraid of trying new things. For me, it's more than that. It's like because of how strongly I'm associating this music with my brand. I don't do that with the South stuff. I don't do that with the Bollywood stuff. I'm sorry, there's patakas happening outside because Diwali time. Woo! -hoo. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's like quick run, escape. No, you're right. It's like don't worry don't about it. Don't be alarmed. This is Mumbai. Um, yeah, right. It's normal. Okay, it's good. But anyway. starting already. <laughs> But yeah, that's the only reason why it's nerve wracking. And also it's kind of like a homecoming vibe for me because I'm from Toronto. I am Punjabi. Um, I grew up singing Punjabi and like my first recording ever was Gurbani and stuff. So it's for me, it's kind of like my, everything's coming full circle. And a lot of people don't know that about me. They think I'm Gujarati because of my last name being Gandhi. So it's kind of like nostalgic and like me being able to incorporate a lot of English and the urban stuff. It's just way more me than a lot of the other things that I've been doing, which is what is so exciting, but also a little scary because I feel vulnerable. I feel like, okay, now people are gonna actually know <laughs> where I'm from. But does, okay, in, 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 a, in a, and you know, with respect to everything you've done already, does this stuff feel, does it just feel realer? I'm just, I'm saying that because when I go to the Punjab, I suddenly feel very much at home. Mm -hmm. I can click into, it takes a couple of days, but I click in and I go, man, there's something deeper running on here where, I'm just very comfortable here. Is it similar with Punjabi? Because you've done, you, you've kind of been a foreigner of music in your singing styles. Yeah. And now, you, like I said, now you're going back to your roots. So does it just feel more homely? It does. 
It does. Um, and it's really cool because this is the kind of music that, again, I grew up listening to. But then also, like, my brother, for instance, he's a huge fan. Like, he, he DJs, so he's always on it when it comes to music. He knows what's going on. And this is his style, too. Like, for, for it to be, like, and, like, my cousins and stuff, for them to resonate with my music is, like, really fun and homely, like you said, for me. Yeah. Whereas, like, my cousins are not going to listen to my Tamil music, obviously. They're not going <laughs> to. Sure. And, like, even my parents are really excited about it. Like, in the promos for Chal Koi Now, for instance, I did some shairi in Punjabi. And so, like, this is the first time I'm kind of, like, dictating lines or, like, speaking in Punjabi publicly. And so I think it's it's exciting for my family as well and for every, everywhere, everyone at home where I'm from. Yeah. And w w when are you next venturing back to Brown Town, Toronto? Brampton. Brampton. Um, I don't know. But maybe for Christmas or something. Oh yeah, Merry okay. Christmas. Did I say that already for all the years uh, to come? You did Christmas. Advance, you didn't do Hanukkah. I've just had a complaint. Oh, sorry, sorry. Happy Hanukkah. There you go. Thank you very much. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Happy um, Hanukkah. Yeah, oh, no. um, um, what, what, no, have you ventured? Have you been back to when was last time you went to Canada? I was actually there not too long ago. I was there uh, in September. Was it? Yeah, September. So. So the, the Punjabi stuff musically has been going on how long? So my first like urban Punjabi release was um, Miraji Karda, which was with Deep Jandu, who was like a guy from Tirana. Yeah. That was, I think that was back in June or July that we put so, that out. What I was working out is what came first, the trip back to Canada or the Punjabi music? So I'm like, did ah. you, so clearly you did the Punjabi song with Deep Jandu, you thought, Something's moving me here. You know, I'm getting I into actually this. had plans for like Nana and other songs before the Deep Jandu song happened. Oh, so good. it's it's all kind of like kitchen at this point. It's hard for me to even to like remember what happened first. <laughs> but um basically the Punjabi stuff has been happening for like a year, I would say. But was was AR Rahman on the phone like, Janita, what are you doing? We've just we've just built you up to be this brilliant South Asian singer. You know, you've got me composing you and now you're going back to your Punjabi boys, you know. And, <laughs> Punjabi boys. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you're going, you're going back to those balle balle vibes. How dare you? I'm I'm A.R. Rahman. God damn it. Of course you would never say that. Um, I actually haven't spoken to him since these songs have been, like about this actually, since these songs have released. Um, last I spoke to him was on my birthday and it did not come up. Uh, <laughs> And recently, actually, I sang a Kannada bhajan for Era Monster. So, like, all that kind of stuff is still going to happen just because I feel really connected to that music. And I feel very connected to being a chameleon. And I just find so much joy in, like you said, like being like an actress when it comes to my voice. Yeah. So, um, I don't think anyone from any genre I'm part of would ever say that and be like, what are you doing? Where are you? I think they all know that about me. They're like, oh, yeah, cool. That's another thing she's doing. Like, trying out so it's cool <laughs> and, and, and and i know you you must get all that kind of oh you know because you are so animated in in your chat and, and eloquent and able to to deliver lines in different ways you know goes, you you could act you could be on screen you could do that so there must and, and in that in this kind of world particularly in india there must be so many options thrown at you or available to you if you wanted to yeah, I haven't really entertained a lot of those types of options as such because I really feel like it's flattering when people say that, when they're like, oh, like you can express really well and we feel like you should act, you should be on screen. Um, but then I always feel like, but I don't know if that's the same thing. Like <laughs> acting, like I would never want to take it for like the skill for granted. Um, and I would definitely want to train if I was to go that route. Right, right now, that's not the plan. But I honestly think it could be at some point. I think it might be fun. Where it comes to like my music videos and stuff, that's where I'm really interested in exploring performance and acting. Because I feel like if it's going to help bring a song of mine to life, then I definitely want to delve deeper. Look at you with your little flashlight. What's going you on? You know why? Because it, it's, I'm in Dubai, right? And it suddenly got, it gets dark really quickly. And I'm looking at you on screen. And in the last, since we've started recording this, in the last 10, 12 minutes, like I'm looking at you lit up, Skin it's called a ring of... light, Tommy. Oh, get with I, the program. You know, I I need to get a ring light. That's what, okay. That's what I'm gonna pitch. I did see them in the in the local mall, but I'm now now I just <laughs> now I feel like you're about to recite like a scary story. <laughs> yeah. 
It's like a Halloween thing. I'm so sorry, but I'm just, I'm doing this. So you know I'm visible. Not only that, I'm wearing a brown t-shirt with a brown background. I'm just going to slowly sort of melt away into it. So no. That's apologies. what's happening. That's what's happening right now. I'm, I'm trying to light myself as best I can. This is the, the makeshiftness of it all. Um, So, no, so, so look, you're right. You are capable. You can do all these things and, and it must it must feel nice. Uh, do, you, do you plan, do you plan like, months years in advance or or are you in that kind of let's just see how it all goes you know people around you go right let's go with this no, let's do a bit let's do a few Punjabi songs we've got these numbers and and you're like yeah cool I'm open to that so um I have traditionally not really been a planner that way I've been very short-term um oriented you know six months at a time let's see if this works out if it doesn't then after six months I re reevaluate and I feel like that's kind of worked the best for me because it helps me manage my expectations. It helps me just go with the flow. It also, because this industry is so volatile and things just get thrown at you that you would never have expected, it's easier if you haven't set anything rigid in place in terms of planning. But that being said, I have more recently, like during COVID, during the pandemic, I feel like I've started to appreciate the importance of future planning a little bit more so than before. So I am a little more forward thinking when it comes to like plans and career and goals. But for the most part, I'm still kind of let go of the flow. Right. And, and you know, like, obviously now you're into, well, not say now you're into, you know what I mean? You know, we've got the, the new Punjabi track, the name of the track. I want you to say, if you don't mind, I always like it. Like... Chal Koina. Chal Koina. Oh, no. Chal oh, Koina. The... Did you forget the name of the song? Chal Koina. Chal oh, Koina. Oh, no, I was going to go with the Tumka song. Oh, which Tumka song? Uh, I thought that was the the, the, uh, well, the one I was listening to a little while ago. Something... We, we had a song come out today. Like my first solo yes. came out just now. It's called we Jalkoina. Did... We're okay. like, I'm in Hawaii. Beautiful. Uh, dancing. How... Okay. So the, the Jalkoina, maybe I'm, I'm just, maybe I'm just having a stupid moment, but the Jalkoina song, which is not, not unheard of. Um, shot in Hawaii. That, shot can in I... Hawaii. Can I just, oh, no word of a lie, in my boredom here in um, Dubai, no, when I say boredom, when I'm back in the room, there's no one else around me, I'm, I'm still on my own. I just thought, I started Googling a Hawaii holiday because Hawaii has become the new Barbados of the world where the, not the millionaires, it's where the billionaires go. That's what it's being billed as. Is it? T tell me about Hawaii, because I want to That's hear why it. we had to go there, because it's where oh. the billionaires go, if you know what I'm saying. That's how you roll. Um, that's so, how we roll. That's how you do. Us um, good folk out at Treehouse VHT, oh, we take our shit real serious. <laughs> I don't know the accent that was, by the way. That, that, that kind of went down south. We it take did for a real... second and then came right back up. Yeah, it's all right. It works. I told you, I love it. It's Because you're, you're global. You, you've got about 15 <laughs> different characters running through you. So you can do any accent you yeah, like. You're like confusing. Yep. confusing. There you go. Confusing. Coming, coming to a Texas bar soon is Jolene <laughs> Gandhi. She going to sing for y'all. She going to have a good time. Um, oh, so, my God. Tell me about Hawaii. Tell me about shooting in Hawaii. Tell me about what Hawaiian people are like, please. I wish I could tell you all of that stuff. We went there and we shot and we came back. We literally were there for three days. Um, again, it was during the pandemic, so we were very, very careful. Um, we made sure that we took all the precautions, got our tests done, all that stuff. We did interact with a few local people. We had a few um, Hawaiian dancers in our video, and they were really cool and really open to collaborating, especially because they love the song. So it was really cool to see that, and it was really heartwarming to see that. And just the landscapes, ugh, it's, it's one of those places where everywhere you look is like a postcard. Oh. Also, we were on the island of Kauai. So that's that's where Jurassic Park was shot. Wow. And there's this like iconic landscape where you can see the mountains in the background. And apparently, I don't remember this because I still haven't gone back and checked, but that's like an iconic memory from Jurassic Park. And we shot right in front of that with a horse. And it was just such a majestic feeling. I got to sit on a horse and ride a horse for the first time in my life. And I love horses. Do you really? <laughs> no, no, sorry, surely not tempted to ride a dinosaur. I thought you just would have got like a little, like, or just put a dinosaur head on on the horse and then just and gallop back. Just been in the movie, exactly. Yeah. Could have done that. Damn it. But but why That's Hawaii? Director. Should have done that. What, yeah. What? Why Hawaii? Okay, so we just wanted to capture something that was just 
that gave like an enchanting vibe and gave also like a full nature vibe. So yeah. you can't deny that when it comes to stunning visuals in terms of nature, Hawaii is probably one of the top few places you would think of. Um, also the climate and obviously worked in our favor, um, but also the tropicalness, the greenery, all of that lended really well to the way the song production was in our heads. So um, going there, getting in the water and playing with all like the natural elements, we really wanted to incorporate that into the visuals. And this is all Jay Skilly's, you know, vision. He's the director and right. he's um, from Treehouse VHT. So um, yeah, it just made sense. And then once we got there, we were just like, this is just, we, we couldn't have done a better, like we couldn't have picked a better place. So. Oh man, I love it. And you said you fell in love with horses. Is it, I'm surprised you haven't ridden a horse already. Just I always wanted to. When I was growing up, I remember I used to tell my dad when I was like 11 or 12, like, oh, for my birthday, let's go horseback riding. And they just never end up happening. But then for this video, it happened. I was like, oh. And, and <laughs> the first time people ride a horse, you obviously, because you have to ride the horse. You have to work with that kind of, it's a tempo. Yeah, it's a tempo, it's isn't it? So uh, how, how are you with tempo and rhythm? Any good? Um, it was really hard for me to pick up tempo, especially really? when sitting. Yeah, especially, well, also, I didn't really, like, ride, ride the horse. Like, he kind of, like, trotted no. around. We weren't, like, galloping or anything like that. No, but, but even, even a, like, a gentle but trot. Even a trot, you're right, yeah. you're right. I'm so, so you've gone horseback riding, I assume. Oh, honey. He's like, I'm a natural equestrian. I, I don't call for an Uber. I, I just, I call for a cowboy. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and then this Indian's riding his horse. No, but my, if I'm honest, my nine-year-old son is obsessed with horses. horses. Cool. Like that's his thing, and has been for years. And so every birthday, we even had we had two ponies in the garden in our house, just doing oh, wow. laps for the kids. And then the next year, he wanted ponies again, and we couldn't do ponies again because we did that last year. So we got two donkeys. And <laughs> I'll tell you the story, Janita, because I think you're probably one of the only few artists I can share this kind of level of intimacy with. The donkey <laughs> took a wee on the grass, and where okay. he took a wee, that little patch of grass grew a lot more than <laughs> anywhere else in the garden. To the extent that I thought, if that donkey had weed on my head, would I have a full head of hair? Question. Wow, that's where your mind went. Yeah, so immediately, within seconds. Within <laughs> seconds <laughs> Um, of course it did. You yeah. should call the donkey back and see what else it could do. Yeah, exactly. But I, I, I don't know if it counts as animal cruelty to ask a donkey to wee on you. I don't know what. Maybe there's a website for that. I, I feel know. like this conversation is going back down south real fast. Yes, yes it has. <laughs> and we've left that. We're up north now. We're, we're, we're in the, we're in the we're Himalayas. We're back up north. Let's stay up north. Yeah. <laughs> but but I'm, there is, sorry, and I'm going to say, there is something special about horses. There is, when you, yes. there's a, you, you know, this kind of amazing, huge structure of a beast. And when you're around them, there's a deepness in their eyes. When you look at it, you're like, you're, you're thinking something, horse man, horse boy, horse 100%. whatever you are. Yeah. I feel like they're like very intellectual beings. And I feel like there's just, I can't think of a better word than the word majestic. They just have this majestic quality. And when you're around them, you feel at peace. And also, um, like you were saying, you need to have tempo to be riding a horse. You also need to actually have chemistry with the horse. For the horse to let you sit on him, you need like, to vibe, and I feel like you need to match energies with the horse, and I feel like even that's something I didn't realize until I was face to face with Luna. His name was Luna. Oh, very good. Oh, see, and that that kind of fits, you know, Luna, the Moon, Earth connection, you, free spirit, Hawaii, out there, you know, it's free all... spirit. Thank you. That's what I was lo looking for because the song is about letting go, and so it's about you know, it is after breakups and it, like situationally, but I feel like it's like one of those universal concepts. Where it's like, because she's saying, tu aprera, me aprera, chal coina. We're going our separate ways, but it's okay. And it's about letting go, but in a very positive spirit. And not having the end of a relationship, not having that be something that's necessarily negative. Yeah. So I, I just think it's a really mature thought. And I think it's really relatable for a lot of different scenarios. And the free-spiritedness of the song was definitely matched by the visuals. I want to add to that. Because um, I would like to say, I I've left... I, I haven't had many relationships before my wife, but the couple that I have had have ended on good terms. I mean, we've decided it's not going to work. It was probably going wrong for some time, but we ended like how you're saying, like kind of go, look, let's just, I don't want no bad vibes. I don't want to, I, yeah. I don't think I could sleep at night knowing someone out there thinks, 
what an you know whatever he is what yeah. oh man I, I don't want that so you know whenever it, it's happened it's ended kind of amicably i i put that down to me having sisters because i think i'm in more in touch with Probably. that yeah. side but but don't you think there's a mass it's weird how when it comes to relationships suddenly everyone gets very egotistical and they can't end a relationship without kind of going yeah well screw you man because why is that why are boys like that in general because boys it's you know it's not just boys i would i'm just i'm just gonna say and admit to you that in my past relationships, my first relationships, I was not able to end them amicably. Like I, I remember the first like two serious relationships I had, both of them when they ended, I was like, I can't be your friend. Like it was more me than him that felt this. Oh no, but that, that's something different. Whether you can or can't be friends, like, sorry, I'm not in contact with no, any exes. Cause I'm like, oh. we're, we're not friends. This, the basis of this interaction wasn't friendship. So right. I, I actually, my stance on it is I don't think you can be friends because there was an attraction there. And now that's attraction. <laughs> okay, now we're just like getting really detailed nope. about this. But um, my, my first two relationships were friendships first. That's different. So, Mom was in yeah, a it club. might be different. Mom was in a club. I was doing this and then <laughs> we're, in a, we're, we're in a relationship. So that, you know, so it's kind of slightly different. That's um, a little different. <laughs> no, I was doing the running man and they were like, hey, you could do the running man. I was like, yeah, want to go out? Okay. That's pretty much Next how the thing you went. know, y'all, we're dating. <laughs> no, but, but that's different. So, okay. But then can't, that's worse for you in a way because friendships can get ruined with the dating yeah. and then they can't go back. Never go back, Janita. Never go back. <laughs> I mean, some people, though, Tommy, are able to do it. And, like, kudos to them. My last relationship ended on a very positive note. And I'm actually friends with him. So it's possible. Friends? Like, friends? Like No, friends? no. We don't hang out. Right. But I don't have any, like, problem if he was to, like, hang out. Like, we were to hang out. It'd be, it wouldn't be that weird. It'd be cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's because you're both in a mature way. But what about when he or you start dating someone else? And then you wouldn't, you can't feel comfortable, surely, sitting with this ex, kind of going, oh, and then he did the, oh, God, I'm so chuffed. My boyfriend, he booked a trip to Hawaii and he booked five horses for me to ride all at the same time. He tied them all together. Oh, my God, he knows I love horses. What is this level of, like, storytelling? What? Like, it's so random. Oh, coming from you, blimey neck! You're the you're my random friend. You're the one I can do this kind of stuff with. That's what I was saying. No. Oh man, but no one can but, top your randomness when it comes but, to this kind of stuff. Anyway, you, you know what I mean. Like it, it, then it's like there's things you can say and can't say. And and I heard that actually on on another podcast I listened to, and it was um this woman was saying you know don't hold back from telling people good news because you think they might reflect on their own life as a result of it. And you, you do you know what I mean? Like so. If yeah. you were now in a great relationship, you probably, I wouldn't want to tell an ex, you know, if I was talking to an ex, you know, I'm so happy right now. How about you? Still single? You know, I wouldn't. Yeah. Do you wouldn't want to say I'm so happy right now, but you might want to inform them that you're seeing somebody without saying that I'm so happy part, even though it's implied. I don't know. It's not that <laughs> weird to do that. Like it's happened to me. Yeah. Yeah, what? Someone's told you how happy they are without you. <laughs> no, someone's told me that they're dating somebody. Okay. After that person and I broke up. Right. But look, even the way it was you like see a catch-up call. So sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like it's like you're kind of going, yeah. Someone told me that. Yeah, they told me. Mm hmm They told me. You know what I mean? Like, how did it feel when they told you? Because it must. Because it, it's one of those things where I think like that person is trying to be respectful for the fact that you might find out and they think it's more like fair to you to find out through him or her than yeah. through friends and stuff, right? Because then it seems like there's a secret or you're trying to hide something or there's some weird that we don't need. We're all too old for the shit. No, okay. that's why that's why we dropped the line. Chal -koina. Chal -koina. That's what we say. Let it go. Chal -koina. Also, I just called myself old. I'm actually really young. No, you are. You are. You 23. I can't wait for your 25th in a couple of years. 21 going on 23. That's cool. okay. Sorry, my bad. I, yeah, I, I didn't allow for the time difference. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Help me out. Uh, but listen, uh, you, I, I, I love the fact that you're, you're always trying new things. I think that's super brave. This for me was a big deal going daily with my podcast. It took me a while, a good yeah. couple of years to get my head around the fact Look that. Look at you, you're I'm, sitting in the dark. 
Yes. Lying on <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a light on my phone, you know, in a five star. You've come a long way, Tommy. The guy, the guy who set me up in this business center, he did, you know what? It's you can see the light just above me. It's lit everywhere. But he's put me in this call center booth, and <laughs> now I'm like, I'm 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 in the dark. So we will we will use the darkness as our cue to say thank you. Good luck with Jalcoina. Good luck with your new ventures. Let's just keep in touch with and find out you know what horse you rode next. Yes, please do stay in touch and stay updated because I am gonna keep switching it up and doing something new and trying to surprise y'all with something or the other so Good. And, thank and what, you for supporting the music tommy always always no always uh, well particularly now it's a lot easier to listen to it because we can actually sing along um so for me so that's nice <laughs> as well and so can my family and i and then I, now we can play it in the family parties and go that's my friend yeah. see because i'm gonna go yeah. and it's such an easy one too like the hook it's literally three words that repeats over and over so no excuses tommy you better be singing it what are you trying to say? You basically said, and it'll be fine for you and your thick family to sing along with Tommy because it's just nice and simple. For you, Tommy, all right? No, I'm kidding. For you. No, <laughs> we like a good hook. And and what's what I think is so great, sorry, I'm going to just add this in last minute, is because I know of you and your rags and your alaps and all those things that you can do and your, and your training and who you've worked with and your history, I know that you aren't just going to pick any old hook. The hook is going to be that hook for a reason, or you're gonna have tweaked that hook along the way and gone, what if we did this at the end or that? I don't know, you've got- I want you to hear the song. No, I'm, I'm on it, I'm on it right now. I'm and excited I was, that, because you said that. So. Right now, I was listening, like, I was listening to songs today, like, um, Inglisu, that one, Inglisu. Oh, wow, yeah, Love Sue something, something, yeah. And, and uh, Ieva? Ieva, Ieva. There you go, All right? Because I was Ieva. thinking about Ieva. All right, so Ieva. I was just going through, literally, um, if I'm honest, I was by the pool, so I thought put on a Janita Gandhi playlist on Apple Music. You just type in Janita Gandhi, search for the artist, and then brrr, everything you've done is all there. And I'm like, so I was just clicking through them all. And um, and you realize that, that you've got so many strings to your bow, girl, and I'm, that's what makes me proud. So well yeah. done for repping the Punjab, well done for representing Canada, well done for representing India. Um, are you following the cricket? No. Good. You're not missing anything. Uh, listen, you, you, you get out of here. Thank you so much for the time, uh, as always, you and I catch up. Thank with you, you soon. so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Yes, and turn on a light sometime. All right, bye. All right. <laughs> deal, deal, deal. I heard genuinely. This is just as a fact. I heard that if you hit subscribe to this podcast now, if you have subscribed on Apple or on Spotify or on GeoSavan or wherever you are listening right now, if you are subscribing and getting that on a regular, which means you get the little notification when the new episode comes out. Fact. This is a fact. Don't tell no one else's. If you hit subscribe, you can eat as many jalebis as you want and you will never put on weight. I don't, I know. I don't understand the logic. It makes no sense to me. I mean, how's a podcast relate to the DNA way in which your body breaks down jalebi sugar stuff running through your... I don't understand, but what I do know, it's a little cheat to life. So if you like jalebis, then you should hit subscribe to this podcast. Oh, and follow us on social media too. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Follow us, eat jalebis, be happy.